why Django and why not Flask? The reason I, I go for Django is, and, and philosophically, it matches up with other frameworks from other languages. So comparable frameworks that you might find in other languages. In the Ruby world, Ruby on Rails. Um, in the PHP world, Laravel. In Elixir, uh, Phoenix. So there's this is a not an uncommon paradigm, and the paradigm is this. It's the batteries included mindset of Django. So Django takes an opinionated stance on bolting together a lot of pieces into uh, a complete package. Um, and that has the benefit of there are things, especially if you're new, what you could be totally, I don't know your situation, Peter. So if this doesn't apply to you, cool. Uh, but for, for many people does that are, are new to web development. They don't know what they don't know. There's a lot of things to know about the web. Um, a lot of things that, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and I still don't know everything. It's hard to know everything. Uh, so there are whole categories of topics that you'd be like, oh, I didn't know I needed to care about this. And like security is a great example. There's a, like different types of security vulnerabilities that happen on the web that you could be unprepared for. And um, different, like a, a, one of these um, batteries included or another term you might hear is like a full stack framework. Um, these these types of frameworks uh, try and package in all of those learnings from the years from people who have been doing stuff on the web for a long time. And um, I, I like that about Django that uh, I think that there's, there's downsides, which I'll talk to in a minute, but the, on the upside, I feel like um, it gives an, a, this opinionated point of view that tries to stitch everything together that's needed and uh, let, gives you a good toolbox to start. It's, it's not a perfect toolbox. Uh, I think somebody last time said some of the batteries had run are dead. And I think that's true. There are piece, bits of Django that's like, you shouldn't really use this part. Like there are better tools. Um, and that's part of learning ecosystem. Uh, but by and large, Django does come with a, a fairly full set of this is everything that I would need in order to make a website on the internet. Okay, so I'll speak to downsides and then I'll talk a little bit about Flask and how Flask is different. Um, it's not bad, it's just different. So it's, a, it's about personal preference. The downside um, that, that folks will say about Django is like, hey, it has more stuff. There's like, there's, you know, if you go to, well, actually, let's do it. We're over on the Django project and if you... Uh, Django has a, a reputation for being extensive with the documentation and it can actually get to be pretty overwhelming. Like there's like a lot of stuff here. Um, eventually, if you follow what my thinking was, you will you would come to appreciate all of the stuff that's available uh, because um, when you don't need it, it's not like Django is going to you know sneak it in there some way. It's very explicit. So if you don't need it, it just kind of stays over there. But when you do need it, it's like right there for you to import and start using. Um, so, but it comes with that that very concrete trade off of it does it does and can seem overwhelming at first, uh, and that's a very fair critique of of Django. Django has quite a bit to learn from the start. Uh, I do think the documentation is pretty good, um, as a including some tu tu uh, some tutorials. Again, you can read my book. Uh, it's at uh, so I've got Matt Lehman, um, Matt Lehman, understand Django is where my book is. If you, and it's all up for free, like the whole table of contents is here, and it's got twenty chapters of worth of content, starting from like high level and then digging down deeper. Um, that's I think a, a difference in philosophy of comparing the way my book is structured versus what the way Django wants to teach you. Django kind of starts from. Um, the, the database and starts from the bottom and the data that you care about and starts working up and up and up until you finally get to some kind of web page that you show to a user. Um, I started from the other direction said like, no, no, no. And on, on, when you're building a web page, you probably care about the website first and you want to think about the pages and what the structure is going to be. And then you get deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, so it's just a difference in teaching philosophy. Okay. So Django can be overwhelming, but there's lots of good ways to learn. Um, so that's that's my thought there. Okay, the second half of that, comparing to Flask. Whereas Django takes this approach where I'm going to include everything, and it's all there for the most part. 
Um, Flask says this opposite pr approach where I'm going to take this very narrow slice of here's the minimum stuff that you need in order to make something on the web. And then if you need to add more, you reach for Flask's extension ecosystem to start um, bringing in the pieces that you want. So it's building up from a small, under, very understandable kernel and then expanding to what you need. Uh, so on the plus side, this is very easy to understand initially. Um, yet, Jeffrey, I'm, I, I tend to agree with you. That's going to be my, my criticism of, of Flask here in a minute. Um, but <clears throat> so with, with Flask, you can read their tutorial page. And you can see that it's like a single file. And so like, oh, man, I get it. There's, there's, there's not, if you have some Python experience, there's not a lot to add in order to understand, oh, this is how this works. So the, the benefit of, of being small has its advantages. And if you have really simple apps or you're making very simple JSON APIs, Flask can be a fantastic tool. Okay, so that's the, the praise side of Flask. The, the downside of Flask is that, um, you know, if you're coming from different Flask projects, maybe you're working from company A and company B, they both use Flask, they're going to, because it starts minimal and they only provide a, an opinionated middle core, the pieces that you bring in, the extensions, are all going to vary depending on where you go. And, you know, there are going to be some common elements that, like, this is the this is the extension everybody reaches for, for OAuth or email. I don't know. There's probably all sorts of things. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it's going to start to look different for everybody. And that, that may be okay. Maybe you're fine with that. Uh, but I think it does make it harder for knowledge to be transferable from one Flask project to another. That's, that's one point of view. Uh, the other thing is that, as, as Jeffrey commented here, when you build up these layers, like you'll learn, especially as you grow in your knowledge of, of the web, about what you need. You need some kind of way to interact with databases. You need some kind of way to do templating. You need some kind of way to handle forms. You need some kind of way to have an administrative site. You need to think about security, what these these internationalization, these topics that are here. And again, you, you can be, don't be too overwhelmed by them at first. Uh, it's okay. Um, but uh, this idea that you can eventually make Flask just as useful as Django. But you have to build up all of that yourself and wire everything together. And I think that's where, I think that's where Django wins, is that somebody else has done that wiring for you. Like a very smart team of people who have been thinking about the web for a long time have taken this like strong stance of this is the experience that we want you to have. And so uh, it has certain advantages there. So I could clearly have a bias towards Django. That's the product I use. Um, it's where I've, I've landed and I've seen the value in that. Uh, I've, but I've also used Flask for small projects. I, and, and I've seen Flask also used in bigger projects. So I, I get it. Like I, I know that Flask can be a really powerful tool. So I'm not here to, to just crap on Flask. It's a, it's a good, it's a very popular tool for a reason. It's a big part of the ecosystem really likes it. Um, yeah, long live the monolith. I, I tend to agree, Jeffrey. So, um, there's, and then there's other tools out there. So we, it's not just a dichotomy of Django and Flask. So there's the other, um, the other one that is out there. I'm drawing a blank on, it's not API star. That's the, that was one that Tom, uh, What's the other one called? It's got API in it. Python API framework. Gosh, this is embarrassing. Mm, fast API. There it is. Sorry. I don't know why my brain went went off and lost on that. Fast API. Yeah, thank you, Peter. Um, is another like major popular to others. I mean, 70,000 stars is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a great tool to reach for as well. As well, it's a different kind of tool that I would reach for. Um, it, as the name implies, it's more API oriented. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't do server like rendered pages and stuff. I think that's a feature in here, but it's less emphasized. So if you're making a 
like a single page application and you're using React or Angular or Vue.js, whatever the JavaScript world is using, that's your thing. Uh, and you need a, an API to back this stuff. I might be reaching for Flask or, or sorry, Fast API these days. Um, I find that it, especially if you are big into using um, Python's uh, type annotation system, uh, Fast API can be an amazingly powerful tool to help you build good documentation and all course, sorts of good stuff. So that's another good one to te- check out. So I think my my takeaway here is that the Python web ecosystem is still quite rich. Um, there are gaps. Like I'm, I haven't been terribly pleased with the GraphQL support, for example. So if GraphQL is like super interesting to you, um, you know, it, there's some decent stuff out there, but I think there are better tools in other ecosystems, uh, personally. Um, but uh, for server rendered pages, for sure, um, for REST APIs, all of those sort of things, I think Python is, is a hard, hard language to beat um, in terms of productivity and getting something out there immediately that's useful. Um, hopefully that was a useful explanation for you.